Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Diva. This is video 17, and today we're talking about the Trimmers panel. So this is really the video once we're going to be diving into the guts of this synthesizer and really understanding what the different voices are, how they sound detuned from each other, and really why this sounds the way it does. So with that being said, let's right-click here, go to a Knit Preset. Let's select the Trimmers page over here. And today we're just going to be looking at this square right over here because it can be a lot to take in the first time you might look at this thing and really not understand what's going on here. So for this example, we're going to stay in this triple VCO because we have our three oscillators. So just so we understand here, we have one oscillator, we have two oscillator, and oscillator number three over here. These three oscillators are going to correspond with these three rows, right? So the horizontal rows is one oscillator. The second one in the middle is oscillator number two. And then the third one is oscillator number three. Now you might be thinking, okay... Why do we have so many knobs here? So this has to do with voices. So every time we hit a note, right now this is on eight, right? So we're going to cycle every single time we hit a note, we're going to cycle every single knob. So take a look at these LEDs because this is kind of a roadmap and seeing where we are in our voice cycle, I suppose. So they just keep repeating and repeating and repeating. So every time we hit a note, we have customization for the next note that we play and so on, so on, so on. So if we change these voices to four, for example, let's divide this by half. So we have four. So what's going to happen is it's going to go one, two, three, four, and it's not going to keep going. It's going to go back to one, two, three, four. So take a look, look at this. So it just keeps cycling over and over and over again. And this is where it determines our voices here. So now you might be thinking, okay, we have eight knobs, but we have 12 and 16. So that's the reason we have these two knob or these two LED lights. So now we're on 16. So it's going to run through a whole cycle over here, and then it's going to repeat them and then go to the next LED. And then now it's going to restart the cycle and so on and so forth. So that's basically telling us this is how it's going in the cycle of these different knobs here. So for example here, let's go to two right now. So it's just going to bounce between these two lights here. Just back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Okay, so right now we are just listening to oscillator number one. Two and three are down. So really we're just focusing on this top horizontal row. And specifically, since we have voices of two, really this knob and this knob. So the first two knobs on the top left. So what this is doing, this, this gives slight detuning to every time we hit this note for that oscillator. So for example, this might be a little bit easier with three. So now we're going to be concerned with one, two, and three. Now if we hit these notes... We don't really notice a change, and that's because these are all at noon. They're all looking straight up. Now, if we get this third one here and turn this all the way to the left here, there's a slight detune. Now, take a listen as I go all the way from the left and all the way to the right as we cycle through this. Now, maybe a higher octave might be a little bit easier to listen to. It's a very subtle effect and it's specifically 12 cents. So that's why I have this tuner up here so we can really see what's going on here. So the first note that we play here is going to be an F at zero cents right over here. The second one, as you can see with the slide over here, it's also F4 at zero cents. Now the third one, it turns all the way to the right. We can see that's F4 and it was at 12, 13 cents about right over there. So we can see that there is a difference in pitch. Now we turn this all the way to the left and do the same thing. This first voice is not changed. Second voice is not changed. Now the third one, it should be down by 12, cent, 12 cents. Yeah, right over here. So that's the slight detuning that we can do. So as we play different notes and chords, the different voices will have specific detuning and stuff like that. So little subtle variations of this is kind of cool, which brings me to the next point of this detune amount right over here. So at default, it's kind of like maybe a little bit less than halfway. And that's what's giving us that 12 cents. If I turn this all the way to the left, turn this detune amount all the way to zero, what we just did doesn't necessarily have an effect anymore. Even though that third one, is, we turn this all the way to the left, which we would expect the 12 cents difference. Since this is all the way to the bottom, it has no effect. Now, this is the interesting spot. So let's go back to 
double click here. Let's go to voices two and let's turn both of these to the left. So we're just looking at this D2 knob right here. So we don't really notice a huge difference what we did before. Now, as I turn this detune amount all the way to the right, take a look what happens. We wrap all the way around to one semitone. So all the way to the left here, we are on F. As we turn it up here. Then we end up on an E, so one semitone up when this is all the way to the right. So basically this is kind of like once we double click this here, this is gonna say that this knob over here has the value of minus 12 cents and plus 12 cents. The more we increase this, the stronger these knobs here get. So that's how we would take away that 12 cents is turn this all the way to the bottom. And if we double click it, we get our 12 cents back. So moving on from there, we have a voice drift. So this is kind of interesting because this is a slow, wavering, moving, pitch changing thing. So this is where it's really handy to look at this tune here. So if you have this voice drift all the way to the top, make something really exaggerated. We can see that this isn't really, let's turn this down just a bit here. We can see this isn't really turning or really staying still. It's kind of just moving around. It's not stable. It just, it can't really find the center as much. So that's what this voice drift is doing. If we have this all the way to the bottom, we're gonna be locked in pretty well right over here. And as we introduce drift, it's gonna give you all those nice subtle inaccuracies. So yeah, that's pretty interesting over there. And then we can always, always back it off a little bit to kind of have a, control it a little bit more. It's kind of lower values are gonna be a little bit more your, uh, your speed probably. Okay, so moving on here, we have this voice map modulator. So let's turn this back to default here. I think these are all default as well. Okay, so this voice map modulator. So basically this is gonna be setting values for the modulation source called the voice map. So when we're looking for things, for example, like let's go over here to our amplifier pan, right? So if we're looking at LFO2, like that's a, a modulation source, we can look all through our list here and if we keep looking and we're gonna find it, we're gonna find voice map or are you voice map all the way here at the bottom. So this modulation source, right, called voice map, if we go into the trimmers here, this is basically where we go to edit things like this, right, per voice, which is kind of interesting, right, the voice map modulation. So it's modulating the voice and this is the map for it, if that makes any sort of sense. So we go over here to main, right, so we have our pan modulation, so we're affecting the panning and the voice map is gonna be controlling that. So we turn this all the way to the right to have full influence and let's go back to our trimmers here. So if we hit some notes, nothing really happens, right? Let's bring our cutoff up a little bit. Now we have two voices. Now let's say for voice one, let's go all the way to the left and then voice two all the way to the right. So hopefully that kind of, kind of brings it in a little bit here. Let's keep going further. Let's go, number three is gonna be in the center and then four is gonna be on the right and then we need to add those voices so we know how to play them here. So it'll go left, right, center, right. So yeah, so basically with for kind of to wrap it up to kind of really sync it in here. So this voice map is basically a modulation source per your different voices, which we affect here in the trimmers panel. And these eight knobs here are going to correspond to your eight voices. Or if you go to 16, once you hit number nine, it's just gonna wrap around how it did before here and just reuse these same values. Now this voice map modulator is where, where we're gonna adjust that modulation source per voice. So it's kind of, kind of pretty cool. And you can put it on a lot of different things. So really, I guess the sky is the limit and yeah, so on and so forth. So hopefully that makes sense right over there. And as we talked about before in a previous video, these voices and stack are also available on this main page right over here. So for example, let's say we wanted, we have four voices, let's say we want to go to 16 and we want to stack some voices, so adding unison, right? So we click here and then let's go to maybe four voices of unison. So let's change this voice map from the pan mod, pan mod and let's go to stack index here. Now we'll double click this for center. We have four of these voices, right? They're stacked on top of each other. Now, if we change this pan mod with the stack index selected, that's how we're gonna be adding our unison. So 
So yeah, that's basically this first trim trimmers panel in a nutshell here. So take some time with it, kind of focus on with these different knobs here and so on and so forth. And like I said before, just to really sync this in here, this first horizontal row right here is corresponding to this first oscillator. The second horizontal row is going to be for the second oscillator. And then the third one is going to be for the third oscillator here. So everything that we did here, changing these knobs here, only will work for this first oscillator because these, this top row is dedicated for oscillator number one the middle one, oscillator number two, and the third one, oscillator number three. So yeah, if there's any questions you guys have, please let me know in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.